Today's video is going to be better than The Godfather and Game of Thrones combined. And that's because we're going to be talking about hyperbole or overstatement. So stick around. What's up guys? My name is Brandon McNulty. I'm a writer. I'm the author of Bad Parts and welcome to my writing channel. Today we desperately need to talk about hyperbole and Actually, we don't really need to talk about it at all, but I'm going to, and I just want to get you in the mood, so I want to set the tone here by just giving you some overstatement right up front, because that's what hyperbole is. It's the idea of overstating or exaggerating something in order to punch up your writing. Sometimes you use this just to give your writing some more vivid details, or sometimes you might even want to throw in some jokes, and when you overstate things, it can typically be a funny thing to do. Now, hyperbole is one of those things you were probably taught in high school English class that you didn't really pay much attention to, Maybe you had to memorize the definition of it and somebody just said to you, oh, hey, what's hyperbole? And you were like, oh, it's just an overstatement in your writing. Okay, maybe you knew the definition, but you didn't really understand how to use it. And today I want to help you with that. I want to give you some examples and you know show you how it can be done well. And I also want to give you some written out examples of how you can take a basic statement and then exaggerate it and then finally exaggerate it with specificity. Now, the two key components of hyperbole are exaggeration and specificity. When we talk about exaggeration, we're saying that something is unrealistically over the top. And when we're talking about specificity, we're giving concrete details about something. So, for instance, if you described one of the characters in your story as just a really mean guy, that would not be hyperbole at all. That would just be a generic description of somebody. But if you said this guy would slit his mother's throat for a nickel, then okay, well that is way over the top and it's also very specific. Now let's take a look at a couple popular examples of hyperbole. The first one comes from the movie Annie Hall. And this was a romantic comedy from the late 70s. It's a Woody Allen movie. And in this movie, the main character, Annie, at one point, there's a spider in her bathroom and she calls up her boyfriend, invites him over to the apartment for him to just kill the spider because she's freaked out by spiders. And when he comes over and he sees the spider, he sees how huge it is. He actually leaves the bathroom, goes to the closet, and gets a paddle to beat the thing to death with. And when he comes out of the closet with that thing, she's, she's all of a sudden saying, like, what are you doing with that? What are you doing? And then he responds with this line of hyperbole. Oh, what are you doing? What are you doing? Honey, there's a spider in your bathroom the size of a Buick. Uh, okay. So that line about the spider being the size of a Buick is a great example of hyperbole. It's unrealistic, it's over the top, no spider in the real world is going to be the size of a car, and even if it was, her bathroom is way too small to accommodate a Buick. So it's just a great image there, and it's also very specific, which gives it punch. You could have had the same line delivered as, honey, there's a spider in your bathroom the size of a car, but that wouldn't have the same impact. The fact that they choose the specific word Buick makes it such a strong line of of dialogue. And another thing to keep in mind when you are being specific, you don't want to be too specific. You don't want to be saying things like, honey, there's a spider in your bathroom the size of a 1974 Buick with 50,000 miles on it, because then it loses its punch. Then it's just overdone. So uh, when you are choosing specific words, you need to find that happy balance there, that sweet spot. So always keep that in mind. You don't want to overdo it. Now, my second example comes from Conan O'Brien's late night talk show. And in this episode, he invites Bill Burr, the comedian, on, and they start discussing holiday shopping, specifically Black Friday shopping and how customers will line up outside Walmart for doorbuster deals, and they'll be trying to trample one another just to save $50 on a television or something like that. But uh, in this discussion, Bill Burr goes on a comedic rant where he just starts tearing apart these people. I'm going to play it for you right now. Pay attention because there's a great example of hyperbole in here. The thing is, <laughs> if you're gonna go there, you don't want to be at the front of the line. You want to be about 40 deep, and I figure you pop out of the line and you wait till that first wave or two falls down, and then you go over the top like Walter Payton back in the day. <laughs> So that line about going over the top like Walter Payton is a great example of hyperbole because it exaggerates the situation because these people, these people waiting outside Walmart for the doorbuster deals, they are not Hall of Fame running backs trying to jump over the line of scrimmage and get a touchdown. I mean, is, that is not the case right there. And it's also a great example because there is such specificity here. Bill Burr chooses the words Walter Payton to send his message and it adds punch and humor to the joke. Now let's switch gears. I'm going to give you some written out examples 
examples that can show you how to take a generic line in your story and then rewrite it for exaggeration and then finally rewrite it again for both exaggeration and specificity. So for our first example, we'll start it off by saying Kelly drinks a lot of coffee. And that's a boring statement. It doesn't really move the needle at all. So we need to punch this up a little bit. We need to exaggerate. So we'll rewrite it and we'll say Kelly needs coffee to function. Now, this exaggerates things a little bit. I mean, she doesn't need coffee in order to function. She'd probably just be a little sluggish if she didn't have it. But it is exaggeration. It makes it a little better than the previous sentence, but still, it doesn't have punch to it. So we want to get specific when we rewrite it again. And this time when we rewrite it, we'll say, Kelly needs coffee like it's oxygen on the moon. Now, that's a great statement. Not only does it go over the top, but it also gives us a vivid image to play with. We can almost see Kelly in a spacesuit and her oxygen tank is running down and it's it's something that will stick with your reader. So if you can do something like this, by all means, go for it. Let's do another example, and we'll start off by saying Avengers Endgame is an amazing movie. And that's a pretty generic statement. It's a basic opinion. A lot of people felt that way when they left the theater. Nothing is moving the needle here. But we can rewrite it with a little bit of exaggeration, and we can say something like Avengers Endgame is a life-changing experience. Okay, so that's, that's pretty over the top. Most people aren't going to feel like it changed their lives. It's probably just going to make their weekend. But uh, it's still, a statement like that is not really exciting. It's not memorable. So let's try and bump it up a little bit with some specificity. And we'll rewrite it again, and we'll say Avengers Endgame is better than the birth of your first child. Now that's, that's a statement that really comes off as like, okay, it's over the top and it's specific. It's something that is more likely to stick with your audience than those first two sentences. Now let's do one final example, and we'll start off by saying the Empire killed many people. So maybe they just blew up Alderaan, and we say, okay, the Empire killed many people. That's a boring statement. We need to spice it up. And we'll rewrite it, and we'll exaggerate things a little bit, and we'll say the Empire killed countless people. And that's exaggeration because, I mean, if they just blew up Alderaan, we could just say, well, okay, they killed the population of Alderaan. I mean, we could probably quantify that if we wanted to. So it's exaggeration, but it's not really exciting and we need something there to just give it punch. So let's rewrite it one more time and remember we're gonna keep specificity in mind. And we'll say, the empire killed more people than death. And that's a great image right there. You can almost picture like a Grim Reaper in Stormtrooper armor just going around killing people. So, I mean, these examples I just went over, they're pretty basic ones. They're not really like complicated or anything, but I just wanted to convey the idea that you can take a boring statement, you can exaggerate it a little bit, and then you can get more specific with that exaggeration. So I hope this helps. Question of the day, who is your favorite comedian and do they ever use hyperbole in their work? Let us know in the comments section below. Thank you guys for watching. If you want to support the channel, please pick up a copy of the greatest novel ever written, Bad Parts by Brandon McNulty. I will link it in the description below. Also, be sure to check out my other life-changing videos. Hit the like and subscribe buttons for me. Share this video with everyone in the civilized world. And as always, remember to keep on writing.